Welcome to Pet Sitter Confessional. Today, we're brought to you by Time to Pet and the peaceful pet music, Calm Music for Pets YouTube channel. Today, we are super excited to have Mary Reed, owner of North Dallas Pet Care, on the show to talk about her journey into business, how she stays focused and present in the moment, and what it's been like growing her team and some changes that she's had and seen through the through that time of, of growing that. Uh, Mary, I'm so thankful for your time today and, and really appreciate you being here. Uh, could you please tell us a little bit more about, about who you are and, and all that you do? Oh, that's, that's a big order. <laughs> uh, <laughs> thank you, Colin. I appreciate being here today and I'm really honored to be here on your show. Um, I'm just a little prairie dog who is uh, trying to make a go of things here in North Dallas. And um, Pet sitting started in 29, well, the end of 2018, like January 2019, I guess we could say. Okay. And, um, and uh, the actual, that was so, I went solo for about four years. And the last two years have been uh, that I've been running North Dallas Pet Care. Really? And and yeah. you said you started that after you were a homeschool mom for eleven years. What was the yeah. what was the impetus of after you were done homeschooling? You said you were looking for something else. How, how did you land on on pet care? Um, yeah, homeschooled for eleven years. Uh, loved it. Loved my kids, and you know, you do all this stuff so that they can survive on their own. And darn it, then they leave. You know, and and uh, so I was. I was just left looking for something to do. And um, the impetus was really, I, I had a really bad um, uh, a, a chronic thing that happened with my foot. I had two perfectly good feet and my foot just suddenly kind of went berserk. And I literally couldn't put any weight on it for about three months, walking around with a knee scooter, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Lots of doctors. And um Anyway, when I finally came out of that, and it, it's something I still deal with at, at a lower, much lower level, but um, I realized that what helped it was to continue walking. And um, I thought that, well, if I don't keep walking and moving, I'm going to end up in a power chair. I'm going to weigh 500 pounds. And um, so at the time, we had, uh, we still do, had Dobermans, and they, they're not really the best dogs to walk, um, especially, you know, with a very tender foot. I wanted something about this big, you know, really tiny little five pound dog to go walk (laughs) and um, just something to motivate me. And because I knew that if I was left to my own devices, I would not go out and walk on my own. And um, so I decided to, you know, basically rent other people's dogs. And, um, by going out and hiring out as a as a dog walker and a pet sitter, and uh, the only thing I knew of at that time, the only way I knew to do that was to use Rover. And I know Rover gets a really bad rap, and certainly Rover sitters uh, really cover the entire spectrum, you know. And I was aiming for the high end, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, that's how I got my start. And um, it took a while for the business to build up from there, um, just working solo. And uh, developing a few private clients. And um, once I got quite busy and it became more than I wanted to do every day, uh, I could physically do it. But you realize, you know, what you're sacrificing to accommodate all of your clients. And the the work-life balance was um, not good. And I, I love the flexibility of pet care. I love the flexibility of this industry where you get to choose. Um, you know, when you go, for the most part, you have some. You can you can arrive within an hour's time frame, and and you're still we're still fulfilling that re- responsibility. And I like that kind of, that little bit of flexibility we have there. But it's still you're locked in. You know, you can't you can't uh, travel outside the area, and you know, outside of you can't go too far away. And um, so um, I. I was doing too much. I was doing overnights and I was doing drop-ins uh, during the day for other uh, other clients and then doing essentially drop-ins back on my overnight to make sure that, that those pets were taken care of and then back out to see other other clients and like that. You know, sort of I was working a regular day of drop-ins and dog walks and also staying uh, as, you know, doing overnight work for um you know, for other pet owners. And, uh, 
I just burned right out. And I realized that this wasn't, I wasn't happy working at that level. And um, I really liked the idea of bringing on additional help. And I did. I started with um, Colleen Sedwick, who uh, has a business called Pet Nanny. And she offers uh, coaching and that sort of thing. And she has a launch and grow program that worked really well for me in helping me to build a foundation. Um, just, you know, how to get a business license, how to, you know, what, what the website should look like, even down to, you know, how you should choose a name. And I, I have to say, I'm still jealous of the really cute pet care business names that are out there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I mean, I chose my name to be, uh, to, 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 to hit well on search results sure. and North, North Dallas pet care, you know, that's. I hope to land at the top of your search result if you're looking for pet care in this area. And, um, you know, it, it's not very inspired, but there it is. And uh, we're sticking with it. <laughs> it's, <laughs> you know, it's one we're of not going to change that right now. Go it's ahead. one of those first early decisions and going, going full time or making this a business that all of a sudden it's like, it's that first really serious decision I, f- I feel like of, of yeah. how do I want to represent m- myself or who we are to the outside world. And, and man, as much as a name kind of doesn't matter in some instances, it matters a whole heck of a lot for what you're communicating with people. And we, that takes time to have to, and sometimes to be okay with it too. Like you're saying of going, ah, oh, look at all these cute names or look at all this stuff over here. But like, I made these decisions for, for my reasons and then I'm okay yeah. with that, but it's just, it's just different for everybody. Yeah. It's not cute. And, uh, you know, and, and, uh, you know, then you get locked in with the logo and everything and, and, uh, which I'm rethinking as well. But oh. anyway, um, <laughs> I'm I'm ha- it's I'm happy it's great you know but um yeah so that got me started the uh, um Colleen and her uh, and and Jessica Abernathy who's who was my coach she's awesome and they helped help me to lay the groundwork and a- ask uh, answer a lot of those early questions when you're first starting out and um and that got me going and uh, I started I signed on with Time to Pet just to keep track of all of the craziness of scheduling and you know because i i knew how tricky it can be for myself just running myself off of you know off the calendar along with other personal appointments Mm. but having and but and then you're chasing down invoices and you know well you never actually do invoices but you're chasing down payments and keeping track of all that and uh you know it it it, it's manageable uh, as a solo uh pet sitter i think you know at a certain level but once you get you know, much busier. It just, it starts to, it's, it's so easy to lose track of things and you get a few clients who don't pay right away. Um, and then you got money coming in from this end and that end, and everybody might want to pay a different, you know, different way. And, uh, time to pet is great in that and this is not a commercial, but it's just great in that it just combines all that, you know, it helps me, um, it helps me, uh, you know, keep track of, who's going where, who's doing what, all my client info and, um, and all the invoicing. I can just pull up my invoices and see who hasn't paid yet. I don't have to, I don't have to go through my bank account and see, you know, did I get that? Did I get that $120 or whatever it is, whatever the amount is, you know, I have to know the amount to find the amount to know if that person paid. <laughs> and if there's two at that same amount, I'm, I'm hosed. You know? <laughs> And, well, it, um, it is that it is another mental burden that we carry with us, isn't it? Of yeah. Oh, you know, it's like oh, well, I thought I would just be worried about the pet care and making sure that I have the the information necessary. And man, that's that's whole one thing of of, of like I, I have a whole other business that's just administration that I have to get done in order to mm-hmm. actually do the pet care, and and they're equally important as one doesn't exist without the other. And how so finding those tools like you did, Mary, going how do I want to be organized? What do I want to have taken off of my plate so I don't have to worry about that? So that I can be present and I can be fully aware of what's going on when I'm in the actual visit. Right. And it's, a, you know, when you have that tool that you can trust and you can rely on, you know, all the all the things you need are there. And when you uh, I used to keep it all in my head and I don't now. I, I don't I don't have that. I mean, I can. It's there at, at my fingertips 
any time. Um, but yeah, I, I was talking with one of my sitters just yesterday and uh, he's awesome. And, you know, he was saying how he just, he really loves the work. Um, it's, it's good for him in, in a lot of different ways and how, um, you know, he doesn't have any desire to really do what I'm doing, you know, my end of it, you know, but that, you know, and I, and I, and I thought about that for and I thought, wow, what would that be like to just receive assignments and go visit pets? <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah. I mean, Epiphany, I've never been that person, you know, I've either been the, you know, the rover person who's going out doing meet and greets and, and do I want to take this client? Do I not want to take this client? You know, but, you know, to receive um, pre-screened clients and you just go do the work. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. You know? I mean, that's almost meditative. <laughs> well, and because I, I, I will say that one big yeah. barrier for people bringing on employees and bring, building that team is that they worry of, well, what, won't they just want to go do this out on their own, right? Could, it's so easy. Won't they just want to do it? Yeah. And honestly, the answer is no, right? A lot of people, I, I can't tell you, Mary, the number of e- applications we get from people who went, I tried to do this, but I didn't like the overhead, the administration part. I just want to do pet care. And so you're right. It's a, it's a very different mindset to go. If I'm bringing on people, am I, am I, am I filtering them? Am I, am I screening them to be people who just want to take on those visits and are going to also, that means that they're going to have to trust you and your processes that you are doing Mm -hmm. a good job, that you are doing your due diligence. And sometimes you have to walk them through what that process is to build a little bit of that trust. Yeah, I I love my team. I I, I really do, and I, de- I I depend on them, and I and I trust them. And they, they, there's it's a really high bar they have to reach in order to get on my team to begin with. I mean, I started with family and very close family friends, uh, and um, and branched out from there for referrals from others. And uh, so far, I've hired one person from Indeed. And, um, although I've had literally hundreds of applications and, um, <clears throat> and I, I do, I do require that my sitters, um, come from within my service area or very, very, very close to it. Um, otherwise it just doesn't pan out because they're, they're going to have to do, there's going to be times where they're doing just a half hour visit here. So they're driving, you know, I don't want them to drive more than 15 minutes to get to their client is the bottom line. Because yeah. you know it doesn't pan out, you know, no. it, it, not not for daily walks and that kind of thing. Oh, or and now because then again, this is things that they're not considering. Of mm-hmm. um, we've had to explain the same thing too. Of okay, I see that you have applied. You live an hour away. Can you talk? <laughs> and you know, and they'll say, "Oh, well, I come to town all the time," or "I come." But it's like, okay, okay, but right, but there are times where I, we will have strings of visits for you to do. There may just be that thirty-minute visit here. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with making that 30 minute visit in the rain, in the snow, in the ice, you know, <laughs> at all hours of the day and not to try and like, just, but just explaining to them of what we do, because like you said, while we do have this flexibility, something that we continue to run into, just reminding ourselves, reminding staff of, we have to sh- like, there, care has to happen, right? At some point, mm-hmm. like we can't not be there. We can be a little late. But we have to be there. And so there's mm-hmm. no option to just call it off for a day. And we've got, we've got to figure that out internally with how we're going to make those adjustments. Have you heard of Time to Pet? Susan the Pet Gal has this to say. Time to Pet has helped us grow exponentially. We believe the platform's features make us by far more professional than other companies who use conventional dashboards. They are the software gurus constantly developing and improving the platform based on user feedback. This decision was a good one. If you're looking for new pet sitting software, give time to pet a try. Listeners of our show can save 50% off your first three months by visiting timetopet.com slash confessional. Talk about building a team. Uh, Did you start off with employees or kind of what was your decision and how has that process been for you? I started with independent contractors um, in my instruction through, uh, you know, Pet Nanny and all that. Uh, that was a question that we 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 tossed back and forth. And at the time, you know, there's some gray area. You could go with independent contractors. And, um, you know, when you've got so many new things starting out as a new business, 
you're learning new software and learning time to pet, you know, that's, that's a big one. Um, and you're, you're learning, um, you know, you're trying to probably do some marketing. You're probably ma- you're making a, a new business, you know, Facebook page, you're doing, you know, your Instagram, you're doing, you're doing all the different things. Um, you know, you're hiring you're, and all the things that have to happen. And, and even just hiring independent contractors is a complicated process, right. you know, so that, so then how do you pay the, well, time to pet doesn't do that. You know, they'll give you the invoices, but they don't, there's not a way to facilitate slickly through that. And so how do you do that? Well, okay, now you're learning gusto. And, you know, and so, so you're doing all of these things. And I, I think I would have just been a crumpled heap if I'd taken on employees early on. I mean, you know, yeah, employee status people. Um, and so independent contractors have helped me. Um I am I'm still in the process of switching over to employees. So we're still using independent contractors currently. And to answer your question, and um and that, that has worked well for me. Um and um I I signed on with uh Jay Budnick's um Pet Biz MBA, which is awesome. Yeah. Um but I've been but I did it right before I she came out with the Bridge of the Gap program that she offered which is a transition program to take you from independent contractor to employee. Hmm. And, um, um, you can't, I couldn't, I don't have the brain space to do both (laughs) at the same time. And so I, um, uh, she launched that right before the holidays this year. And I just got maxed out and, uh, had to take a step back. So I'm, I'm restarting that and uh i'm about halfway through right now and and hoping to make that march 11th deadline where the new rules take effect on uh employee versus independent contractor like you know they're they've they've re uh is it the department of labor or is it the um irs i forget came out with the new ruling of what they're calling um what they allow for independent contractor yeah and um, so that's I know all I know is March 11th. You know, you know, it's like burned into the sky and into my <laughs> mind. Um, and I, you know, and, and and this is, and I think I, you know, being a if I was just a quiet little business, I think I would probably do okay with independent contractors. But I like a lot of the I like a lot of the perks of having employees. I really like to take care of my people, and I do. And um, but I like the idea of being able to offer additional um, <clears throat> additional things to them. And I, I like being able to supply them with um, with T-shirts, with supplies that they'll need in their work. I, you know, I hate bringing somebody on. It's, it's a, it's, I don't like bringing somebody on who then I have to say, well, here are some things you might want to keep with you on the job. You know, here's a list of things you might want to have on, in your trunk, you know, an extra leash and an extra... You know, maybe they don't. For me, it was not a big deal. I had most of these things laying around when I first started, and you build it up over time. But for them, they may have to go out and buy, you know, go to Petco or something and buy themselves a, a spare leash and and a, you know, the various things you might want to have, some extra dog treats and and all that. So, um, so as a you know, with a, with contractors, you can't. You can't get that for them. They have to supply everything themselves, down to poo bags, everything. <clears throat> With employees, you can supply all that. And um, I just, I, I like the idea of being able to uh, control the training more, be more hands-on with the training. I love some of the the different options out there now, which I haven't, I haven't really deep-dived into yet, but um it looks like there's some very nice options out there for employee training programs where you can, um, I think it's a subscription based options out there for that kind of training or, or just create my own on some of the really cool platforms that are out there. And, um, uh, I like that idea because I, I'd like to, I'd like to build North Dallas pet care to be, uh, to be larger yeah. and I'd like to grow the business. So I can't, it's not a solid foundation to have independent contractors and grow. I can't, I, I'm really lucky in having found wonderful people to work with right now 
who I trust and I care about. Um, I think, you know, as that grows to, I have, I have, uh, four sitters on my team oh. and, uh, um, one of which is a geologist. She's out on a dig. So <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> and she, so she's gone for a while. It's like, come on, I need you anyway. Um, so, you know, as that team grows, if I've got 10 people, if I've got 20 people, that it's going to be a, it's just less as intimate. It's less, you know, I'm less involved with each one. And, yeah. um, and if I have the, if I have the amount of business to support that amount of sitters, you know, I can't be as hands on as I am now. And, and, um, you know, I'm, uh, so yeah, I, I like the idea of having employees so I can uh, grow the business and, and, and that, and the idea of, doing an audit and being slapped with fines, which kind of terrifies me. It's like, we don't need the extra stress. We just don't. We don't need another thing to occupy our little brains. So, Well, and that's what you started off your, that discussion about was, was there was all, there was so much going on and we, we all yeah. reached that 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 point of whether we're starting, yeah. whether we're making a shift or sometimes just in our in our daily lives, there's there's so much going on in our head that the decisions that we make are are a result of that. Of look, this is what I have the bandwidth to comprehend, to move forward with, right. to get to where I need to right now. And so that's what I have to. And then we can come back and reassess or or have different opinions or different options. But we all have those moments where it's and I mm-hmm. encounter them a lot where I'll say, I, I just don't have the bandwidth to make a more complicated decision right now. So what's the, what's the one that gets me forward and in this moment, and that's what we move forward with. And that's just part of managing our brain space. And while, yeah. while not, because what the other alternative is sometimes, well, then I just need to stop where I am and just stop my forward momentum. I need to not do this for a while. I just need to sit here until I figure this out. And sometimes that's not an option either because we've got, you know, things right. don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Well, luckily, my business is humming along at a very comfortable rate. I've got all my my regular weeklies, my dailies, and that's all happening. And the the few vacation care clients that that uh, keep coming back around, and that's lovely. And and that it's all it's just at a nice at a nice steady pace. So this is a good spot for me to just um, dig in and get this taken care of. Like that, and I'm I, I I'm uh, I'm much more motivated. But there's a hard deadline. <laughs> I'm one of those. Um, back to your uh, your podcast about procrastination, you know, oh. that's a <laughs> good cure-all. Oh. You will die if you don't do it by this date, you know. So, uh, <laughs> so, so for those of you listening out there, don't be hard on me because I have independent contractors. I love them. I treat them like my own children, and <laughs> it's, they're wonderful people. And um, and I, I'm getting to employ you as soon as I can. Right. That's a that's a very complicated process. I'm I'm. One last thing about this, and we can move on, um, is that you know part of the bottleneck for me has been um, pricing. So you know okay. there, there's the comp- there's the compensation for what will then be employees. There's the of course all the taxes and things. Um, there's the there's the pricing, and then there's you know whatever uh, whatever my percentage might be or the business's percentage, and the um, the profit margin and that we don't have that big of a profit margin in this business. It's kind of a it's a numbers game. I mean, I I know we're charging good money to the clients, but it, it all gets kind of shaved off here. You know, there's uh, you know there's insurance and and uh, and and various softwares to manage the business side of things, and uh, add some marketing. And uh, there's just a few nickels come rolling out out the door toward towards you. That's it. Um, so. You know, I, I, we're doing okay, but um, so the, that's kind of the bottleneck for me, and that it causes stress for me to um, to look at that. What right now seems like a hairball of, you know, how do I untangle this compensation versus, um, you know, taxes versus, uh, you know, appropriate client fees mm. uh, versus something, you know the profit margin that will support my business and give me something to live off of. You know, this is, uh, this is also a retirement plan for me. So 
hey, that's, you know, <laughs> suddenly it gets very real. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, so, and that's it. It does. It gets it gets very real when we start putting some pen to paper or pencil to paper or Google spreadsheets or whatever, and we start understanding what actually is my my take home here. And and I think that that's a very very important step in understanding where a business is is knowing yeah. what what actually is the outcome of this. Sure, I may feel good that I'm mm-hmm. producing, that I'm that I'm serving clients. I may be happy, right? I may be living a, a life that I, I'm enjoying. Um, but is it actually making a living for me? Because that's still important. It's not bad to make a living doing this. It, it actually enables us to continue to do the thing that we love if we're making a living from it and to not be afraid to sit down and, and look at those and have some hard conversations with with ourselves and where our limits are too, because that's that's where we run into issues when we go, oh, I want to do all this X, Y, Z. I want to get my car wrapped. I want to pay for the billboard. I want to do this thing. I want to get all the nice stuff. And I want to blah. Oh, wait, uh, where's the, where's that coming from? Right. Can I actually make that happen? Right. And that's just, that's part of us understanding more about our business, right. And, and how it's functioning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I don't want to take a loan in order to get my car wrapped. You know, I, yeah. I think it, that'd be a really cool look, but there's a reason why you don't have uh you don't have pet care companies doing that very often unless they're really large. Yeah. It's so expensive. I, you know, it's a neat, it's a neat idea, but yeah. And you said your, your business has been growing at a, at a comfortable rate. Um, how have you been connecting with your potential clients and growing that way? I'm an introvert as many of us in this industry are, you know, I can talk all day about dogs, somewhat cats. I can talk about pets. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a person to go out there and seek friends, but I care about my clients and I care about their pets. And I do, I do touch base with them from time to time about this or that. If there's a, if I know there's an issue going on with the pet, I'll touch base and see if I can help them in some way. I love making referrals for people. I don't personally, I'm not a, I'm not a dog trainer. I know a lot. I know a lot about it. I'm not a dog trainer. I don't want to be a dog trainer. Too old to be a dog trainer right now. <laughs> if I if I was in my twenties, I'd be all over it. But I'm you know I'm not there, and um, and I you know I, I'll refer them out to trainers, to um, behaviorists, and um, to vets. Uh, I I even um, if they move out of my service area, I'll refer them to one of the uh, other wonderful pet care companies mm. in my surrounding area, and I've I've tried very hard to um, connect with others in my area so that I have a feel for who they are and the type of service they provide, you know, scour it, it in, in many cases, well, in some cases, I should say, I don't know them personally. In other cases I do, but, um, you know, I look at the website, make sure they've got all the, you know, all the, all the right bells and whistles, you know, they've got, they're, they're members of, um, um, PSI or NAPS or something, and they're, uh, you know, that, that, that everything lines up and it's all looks very legit and, uh, read reviews. And, and I do this so I can refer people out to the outlying areas because I, I'm in the Dallas Metroplex and, um, we're just, it's massive. It's just, <laughs> when I, where I, I grew up in Wisconsin and there you have like, you'll have like a big city, like say Milwaukee, and then, as you leave the city, there's there's country and farmland, and then and then they'll crop up another small city, and then more farmland or or open space, and then et cetera, like this, you know. Here in the Metroplex, it's just one massive sprawl, kind of like you see in the San Francisco Bay Area, where it just you know that you can only tell you're in a different city because you saw the sign if you're not from there. You know? it, just, it all but because it blends in, doesn't it? There's there's no gap. Yeah, is what I'm saying. And and so I'm in the I'm 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 smack dab in the middle of that. So yeah, it's really it's it, one of the first things I ask people is you know give me an idea where you live. Yeah. Give me a cross. Yeah. You know, uh, nearby intersection so that I can um, see if you're in our service area. And if they're not, I will recommend one or two uh, companies that they can go with that service that area. And um, at least gives them something to go on. Doesn't give me any. Um, doesn't bring me any additional business. But I I hope that it helps to promote goodwill and to 
and to keep pet owners within a um a network of dependable um and vetted um pet sitters mm-hmm. so that they're not just um going out there and so they're, they're not turning to the rovers so they're not turning to wag and and just um finding that random person and and uh having come from there i you know i know there's really good sitters on on rover i don't know about wag i've not done it but um but i know there's really awful ones as well and uh clueless and but that's you know you get any large group of people you're going to have a large spectrum so that's that's just fine but i i want to i want to um th- that's my way of helping to take care of uh you know clients that uh put or potential clients that um that i can't right handle personally yeah hopefully it creates goodwill within the pet care industry too um I forget was it is it Jeannie um somebody who's posted recently who likes to say that you know um um and I'm going to botch this but um uh cooperation happens at the top and competition happens at the bottom basically right. so it's a, it's a higher life form to yeah. cooperate with one another and and I'm I'm not I'm not trying to take any any pet clients from 30 minutes away. I'm not going to come in and impinge on your, uh, and you know, and, and that this area is so dense with, with pets and, mm. um, you know, pet owners that it, it's a target rich environment. <laughs> but it was only like a big magnet I could put out there. You know, I, I would never have to go more than 10 blocks, you know, but, right. um, because they're they're out there, it's just reaching them. And and to your point, where we got here saying how are you connecting with your clients, um, I'm generally not. I do find that when I do any kind of communication with them, whether it's um, uh, whether it's an email communication about an updated you know upcoming change, or whether or you know, or it's if it's uh, I did a mailer about a year into the business because I'm slow like that. Just saying, hey, this I you know I just want you to know officially that I've started North Dallas Pet Care, et cetera, et cetera, and sent them a fridge magnet and the updated business card and everything. And um, and every time I do that, which is very seldom, but every time I do that, I get I get an uptick in business. Mm-hmm. And so when I read your question, my first thought was. Oh darn it! I need to do that newsletter, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and um, <clears throat> because I think I think just t- staying top of mind helps quite a lot. And of course, you hear this all the time in marketing. <clears throat> and um, so, yeah, I need to get that newsletter out, and uh, even if it's just monthly. But having that touch point with uh, clients on a regular basis helps to increase the um, the bookings that I have with clients who are already on the books and that's way easier and way cheaper than finding new clients out there. But, you know, I'd like to do both. Yeah. And it just helps you keep your finger on the pulse of what's happening by being connected to both clients. Uh, you know, I'm sure staff too, right. You, you know, what's going on there. And then other businesses, right? It allows you to just have a, a little bit better of understanding of what exactly is going on. How is my local market changing, adapting? What are people saying? Or how are we feeling about prices? Do I know who I can refer to? What are they doing? Like, it just allows us to have a a a, a, a more um, a, a thirty thousand foot view of what we're working yeah. with to understand because we are. It's such a solitary kind of business and it's hard to get connected with people who do similar stuff so to be able to get out of ourselves and understand oh right this is this is what's going on and and i'm not alone in this and let's let's Mm -hmm. kind of work together in some aspects too i you know i i've had a couple people refer clients towards me which is also nice but in a perfect world we'd just be swapping clients back and forth i'll i'll even send um if i get a really juicy applicant that comes across from Indeed, um, I will send them on to the appropriate um, pet care company in their area. Mm. Uh, if they're, you know, if, if they're a really good applicant and everything looks great on paper, but I can't use them because they're an hour away or they're, 
or they're a half hour. Most most often it's a half hour away, and that's you know that's a that's a, a reasonable commute for most jobs, but not if your job lasts thirty minutes. You know? No, <laughs> and, uh, right, and um, so I will refer them to. Uh, I'll send them off to you know. Hey, go check out you know go check out this other business and uh, see if they're hiring. I don't know, but give them a call and and I'll ping the business and say, hey, I'm sending I'm sending Jessica over there to uh, apply for work. I don't know if you're hiring, but she looks very good on paper. And um, yeah, so in that way, you know, I just, it's little, it's little stuff. And uh, some, I don't always have the time to do that, but you know, I try to take time when I can. How how do you make those initial contacts with those other businesses? What's it like when you reach out to them and start fostering that relationship? Everybody's so busy. I don't always get to talk with them directly. Sure. Um, I, um, my, my husband does a lot of, uh, networking for his, for his work. Um, but he has his own little, he has his own company going and, um, he benefits greatly from networking, from attending networking groups in, in our, uh, Metroplex. And, um, he, it's not unusual for him to run across, uh, a large, you know, pet care provider out there and um so he'll link him up with me and um he sort of feeds them to me and (laughs) so and so i'll reach out and we'll we'll usually just text back and forth um i've met um i've met a couple i'm i'm looking forward to the texas pet sitters conference which is coming up here next weekend next week yeah and yeah um and that's going to be a great opportunity to meet some of these people face to face um, so some of the people already have a relationship with my husband and they know who he is and that helps, you know, this, I'm, I'm Mary, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Neil's wife and, uh, you know, he spoke very highly of you. Tell me about your business or, or I'll look at their website and say, and ask a, a, a question and, um, um, yeah, but it's hard to get a face to face with other, other people who are running tech care companies because, how often do you go to lunch with friends? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. right. It, it, it's <laughs> almost never. It, it's, right. Yeah. But just those little interactions of a direct message on social media or th- or an inc- or an email through their website, just doing an introduction that way. I we've had um we've had businesses who have written letters to us, which I was like, okay, like this is I was not expecting. <laughs> a letter right now um but it's you know that's nice right when they write letter to our to our home office or office and it's like okay like, um, like a paper letter like a phys- like a an physical? actual paper letter yes with a, st- a stamp wow, okay. on it and I, I was like okay um but i but the what that was in the letter was uh their flyer uh a business card like it was like a packet of information and i was like okay oh, nice. that, that's actually really nice now because now i have stuff it's not just a you know it's I, I have something physical for them so i can a remember who they are and and b hand that to somebody who may who, who may need it but it was kind of like a, a, a getting to know us packet from the from some people and i was like oh that okay i know these people and, and i reached out to them separately and thank them for that but it was just a, a nice way to have that kind of introduction uh to to that company so um it's it is finding those ways that that work for us yeah so it's, i usually try to touch base in some way if only if only just a simple text message it's going to get lost in the ether but just say you know here's me here's who i am here's my company you know we 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 don't share clients you know where i mean we don't we don't cross boundaries and, uh, you know, well, I'm here to help. A lot of pet owners don't know how to react when their beloved pet is facing a bout of anxiety, noise sensitivity, or depression. However, various studies have shown that animals react very positively when calming music is played for them. As a trusted pet sitter, have your clients check out the peaceful pet music, Call Music for Pets, on YouTube, where they can give their pet the best chance at relaxing while they're away. From peaceful melodies to soothing nature sounds, this YouTube channel is the go-to spot when your client's pet is anxious and you don't know where to turn. 
Complete with beautiful and vibrant animations, their videos will become your home for the tools needed to keep the client's pet in a state of peacefulness. Be sure to subscribe to the Peaceful Pet Music, Calm Music for Pets YouTube channel. And remember to hit the bell so you never miss a moment of calm. Well, and you mentioned the whole the, the the friend aspect. I think it is important to know like what our uh, purpose is for getting connected with people in the business is going. Is am I trying to build a friendship with this person, or am I trying to build a referral network, or am I trying to do both with this? Because some people, right, don't have time. They might not be interested in being our best buddies. Um, we might not jive when we're in the same room, but operationally they run a business that we would support, right? So going, okay, I can refer yeah. out to them. I might not be best friends with the person, but look, I they're they do all the same things I do and, and we're in line that way. So that's a referral versus, oh yeah, I go out to lunch with them or I grab a cop cup of coffee with them, you know, once a once a week to 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 catch up and everything and just knowing kind of what what we are looking for when we're um when we're reaching out to people too. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not trying to be best buddies and, you know, I, I just reach out from as a business to a business mm-hmm. and, um, and I try, I try to reach out directly to the owner if that's, uh, if that's a searchable thing to find, right. If I can contact directly with the owner, <laughs> well, sometimes you can, if it's a bigger cup, there's a, yeah, there's, there's one very large company in the, more of the heart of Dallas. That's a little harder to navigate to the owner just, but, um, anyway, uh, you know, I try to reach out directly and just, you know, just make that introduction. And, and uh, hopefully, like I said, I'm looking forward to the conference where I'll be able to meet uh, many of these people face to face. And with any luck, you know, who knows, maybe we'll, I'll find some friendships or um, find people I, I connect with on on another level, too. Yeah, well, that's really so, good. And, yeah. and I know kind of all this that you're working on in your business serves a bunch of different purposes, right? And I know, you know, as, as a company, I, I found that I found this on your, on your website. And I thought it was really fascinating, Mary, when you said, let's facilitate a world where both pets and pet owners can have their individual needs met, where the human pet bond can be strengthened, where pets can live their best life within the means system environment available. I love that sentence so much. <laughs> it really. Some, <laughs> oh, thank you. Some, especially the the last part where it says can live their best life within the mean system and environment available, and I I love that because it's it's a recognition that it's not the perfect situation all the time. Right, we can't have right. everything accessible to us, and so I was curious how you how this kind of works out in in your business and when you're working with clients. Good question. Um, this was the this statement is part of a sort of a brainstorming exercise that uh, uh, Jessica Abernathy set us on back in the launch and grow with Pet Nanny, and I liked it. And when I was making my when I was making my website, I kind of got into a panic of oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't know what to put on there. It's like I'm just going to grab this hole and just stick it right on the front page. <laughs> Yeah. And so there it is. You know, I don't know that I would have put that out front, but here it is. Um uh I I feel really strong. What I see when I go into client homes is um sometimes and and I probably do it too, and maybe you do it with your critters, but you know, you kind of develop a blind spot about certain behavioral issues oof, oof. or 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 health or be, you know, either behavioral or, or health or something observable from a, a outsider standpoint that you you've just you know and we all have those things about ourselves thank goodness <laughs> but you know you go into so you go into a client's home and you you get to understand the 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 pet and you and you see how things are are working and I, I try to find a workable solution um for the client and and that's where the you know means system and environment come into play you know it's um not everybody's going to spend a couple thousand dollars on 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 training or you know put a huge investment into a behavioralist that might not be an option for them um or they're not going to have the 
you know, they're not going to be able to buy the most expensive equipment or what have you. And that's fine. You know, I, I'm, I'll meet them on their level. There's always a workaround. And um, I just try to make that. I try to make I try to make the life, the you know, we're, we're going in and we're taking care of. OK, I'm kind of taking five different approaches here. We go in and we try to make the life better for the pet, right? We're adding some enrichment to their lives. The pet would normally be laying around sleeping or getting into trouble while their owner is at work or on vacation or what have you. Yeah. Oh, true story. Um, and so we come in and we bring a little bright spot. We're there. We're happy to see them. They're happy to see us. Um, you know, we play with them. I, I like to bring puzzles. I like to bring um you know, like have get them out for a walk if I can, or a sniff, or play. You know, something. You know, we all. I, I try to do something that's going to make their life better while I'm there, mm -hmm. and um, which creates, you know, of course that makes their life better, but it also frees up the owner. Um, short story: I um, I hired one of my dog walker to come walk my dog once a week because I found I wasn't getting him out often enough. And, um, I wanted to supplement that. And, um, uh, my dog is wonderful. I have a beautiful rescue Doberman and, um, he's great and well-trained, but he's still a Buffalo on a leash. You know, he's just pulls like crazy, hard for me to walk. So I, I take him out on long lead. Thus you have the, uh, the blog post that you mentioned about, uh, about using a long lead because it'll, it'll take you right out if you're not careful using a long yeah. lead. But but he works really well on a long lead because it gives him the opportunity to go sniff around and all that. Anyway, so I hired my my sitter to to come and 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 walk Cooper um, once a week, and um, I noticed that I really benefited from that um, in that. Um, just per just my relationship with my dog, I knew he was going to get this happy little this happy little um, I don't know little bouquet of joy that he gets to go, he gets to sniff, he gets to explore, he gets to do stuff, and he gets to go places I wouldn't normally take him because um, my guy was taking him out uh, walking on the street on a regular leash, and I don't do that because I'm not strong enough to manage that, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> and but he'd take him out. And uh, so he got to explore some things he doesn't normally get to see. And I, I felt, you know, I, ju I just felt better. I felt more, more happiness knowing that my pet was, his life was improved. Um, you know, we all have that guilt in the back of our minds that, you know, and we see the dog that we love so much <laughs> or the pet that we love so much. And we know we've been staring at computer screens all day uh -huh. or, or coming home covered in somebody else's pet hair. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we just, we sometimes yeah. don't have that extra bit to give to our own animals. And, um, and yeah, I'm in that category. And, um, you know, so we do what we can. And, and um, having that was really nice. And I, I'm not alone in that. And, and our business isn't unique in that way, in that, um, everybody's busy everybody's distracted and to know that you know for you know for for 30 bucks or 40 bucks or whatever for for a fairly small amount of money they can um they can have the peace of mind knowing that their pet is being um uh, enriched their pet's life is being enriched yeah and um so that you know the the pet's like this is cool does it involve treats and well, here he is now. Hi. Oh. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and um, did you hear the word treat? Is that what happened? It came in right on cue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but their, their life is being enriched. And, and also the, um, you know, the owner has peace of mind knowing that their animals is, is getting that love and attention. And if they've hired you, I think they, they will, um, they expect that, you know, there is going to be that love and attention. There is going to be that, you know, and that, and I make that part of uh, my push is to communicate that to the client mm. that, you know, um, I care. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not just, I'm not just there to put tab A into slot B. I'm, 
you know, I'm not just there to refill the water, you know, but I'm going to do those things and I'll take care of the physical needs. I'm going to take care of all that, but I'm going to do, um, you know, I'm going to help make your life better. And what else was there about that? Um, and the other thing, the other thing I want to bring up, and, and somebody else mentioned this, I can't take credit for it, which is that it actually empowers the pet owner to do things, gives them more freedom. So you want to take, it's a long weekend and you want to get away and go to hill country, or you want to get away and just, you know, have some time uh, in a, at a place where the dog doesn't fit in or, you know, or the, the cats are going to need some care while you're gone. It gives you that freedom to just go. And whereas, um, you know, normally you'd be stressing about, well, what are we going to do with Fluffy while we're gone? Um, you you now have a solution. And it's not a solution you have to uh, spend hours and days finding. You have someone. And that's us. Yeah. And um, I, I when we first, we got our first Doberman, we got a, um, we, 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 were, we were new to the breed and cautious we did a lot of research uh met uh we, we joined the um we got to know people in the Doran Pitcher Club of Dallas and um approached it that way and we found a reputable breeder within within the Doberman Pitcher Club of Dallas and um and from there we bought a little puppy from a show breeder and who was not a he was not a show dog our attention was not to show but we wanted to start with somebody. We didn't. We weren't sure. We wanted to start with rescue baggage <laughs> when we didn't know the breed to start with. It was a first dog for our little family, and um, so this dog became our center of focus. We were homeschooling. Uh, the dog was the lesson, and we each took turns. <laughs> we learned about training. We all learned about training. My youngest was eight. Uh, my next and my son was. I think he was, um, no, my daughter was nine. My son was about 10 or 11. And um, so they're old enough to do stuff. They're smart. Yeah. And um, and so we each took turns, you know, we're doing potty training. Everybody got a shift. So they had to either, either crate the dog or leash the dog to themselves or, or, you know, eyes on the dog at all times. Anything that happened with the dog during that, three or four hour shift was on them (laughs) (laughs) and and we all took turns, you know, including my husband who was also working from home. And, um, although for him, it was usually, you know, okay, it's time to create the dog. But, um, um, so anyway, so this dog was a big part of our family. All this to say, we went on our first trip. We had an opportunity to go visit some friends in Florida in a beautiful area. And, um, so we were going to do a driving vacation and pack everybody in the car and go to Florida. Well, the, the dog didn't fit into this picture. Mm-hmm. And we had first dog in, in our little family and we didn't know where to turn. And, um, and I, I knew nothing about pet sitting at that time. This was years ago. And um, so our first thought was, well, we had a really excellent um, babysitter. And from when the kids were younger, and because she was a uh, the daughter of a friend of ours from church, and she was just awesome. I think she's an attorney now. She's really brilliant. She was she was the kid who would come with a backpack full of stuff to do babysitting. She would bring, um, you know, videos from home that were different than what my kids had. You know, appropriate but different games from home that were you know appropriate but different, and usually some kind of a snack. And I'm like. You're like a professional babysitter. <laughs> anyway, so we hired uh, Krista to come and look after our dog, and we didn't know what that looked like. Um, does she stay in the house with him? Does she do drop-in visits? I don't, you know, I had no idea. And she did some combination of things with him, and, and it worked out okay. But I remember the stress of trying to figure out what that, you know, you know who can possibly fill this need for us was very difficult and what even that looks like. I mean, I I don't know if we got any reports from her at all. I think she may have said something or called. I don't know. I, you know, I, it was just, we're going on faith, you know, we hope it works out. Um, and, and we did a few other subsequent trips, uh, you know, at that point having two dogs, 
second one, we got a rescue, the rescue Dobie. And, um, and so, you know, who comes to stay with the Dobermans? Well, who do you want in your house for? <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> At the time it was like, okay, no, we can't leave the dogs alone. I'm one of those pet owners. I'm really super fussy. Can't leave the dogs alone. We need somebody in the house. Well, who do I want in my house? And um, that's a tough question. Yeah, because that's it can't get more personal than that. Your dogs and everything you own. Um, so um, we were lucky enough to find some young couples uh, over the years to uh, members of our uh, local church community that were able to come help out. But each time it was a different problem because this couple had moved out or, you know, Krista had grown up and gone to college or, you know, you lose the sitter. And mm. the beautiful thing about having, um, you know, working with something like North Dallas Pet Care or, or your business or any of the wonderful businesses that listen to your podcast is that you have the permanency, you know, it's like, uh, I need somebody. I'll call Mary. I'll call North Dallas Pet. Well, they probably will think about it as North Dallas Pet Care as yeah. much as I'll call Mary. And um, and uh, you know they know that if uh, they know I'll have somebody available, and um, they've learned to trust that the person I send to them will be right, and uh, we'll get the job done, and we can be we can be depended upon. To not only, you know, keep your pets alive while you're gone, but to make it a good time for them, to make it uh, enjoyable to, as the uh, best way we can. Yeah, it, it's a reminder that when, when in, in your statement here, too, you say that the pet owner and the pets can have their individual needs met there, as in the pet owner has needs, the pet has needs mm-hmm. as well. And we cannot lose sight of that. At the end of the day, we're a people business. We're up. We, we solve problems. For people, and we say a lot of things about, oh, that's peace of mind, and that's blah blah. But just what you broke, I say blah 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 because what you just broke down there, Mary, is a very, I mean, it's an excellent example of what thousands of pet owners go through to care for their pet, and they don't a know any different, or b um, they 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 don't have any other expectations of well, this is just what it means to get a pet sitter is I have to call five of my family or friends, and I have to see who is in right. their network. I then they are coordinating the care of well Sally can come until Tuesday but she's got to leave and during the day and I've got to get my neighbor to come over and do that. and we forget that in running these businesses a lot of times mm-hmm. of we forget yeah. those pain points for that person and when they want to take that weekend to the hill country or they want to go to the beach or when they want to stay out late at the movies after work what, what how, how do we communicate that to them and and that's that's where we can come alongside them as a partner with them right as yeah. and go you can live your best life your pet can live their best life and we're here to help facilitate that and the the relief that you see in people and their when they get that when they understand what life can actually be like without that mental burden that they are carrying it's immense it's absolutely immense yeah I, I've noticed a change in our business. Um, thank you for that. That's that's, that's really nice. I'm, I'm glad you like that statement on my, on my website. I've noticed a change in our business since um, since COVID. I, I and since I was solo, um, I as a solo sitter, I did not a lot, but I did a, a hefty amount of overnights um, and a lot of vacation care, heavy on vacation care. And as I've, and I don't know if it's a COVID thing or, um, you know, North Dallas pet care, you know, birth pangs, I'm not sure what, what the changeover is. And I I imagine it's, uh, it's had more to do with COVID. Um, But, you know, people aren't traveling as much now or weren't for a time. And so what I got was what I've got now is mostly um, midday drop-ins, dog walks, and um sort of regular reoccurring either either they schedule monday through friday or two or three days a week repeating or there's the um you know there's there's the the nurse who works odd shifts and needs coverage here here and here and next week it's here here and here and next week it's this other you know and you know but it it, it reoccurs sometimes different times you know different uh days and um for various reasons, people are, you know, I'm in their back pocket. They know that 
when they have they have coverage on those days that they're going to be away from home longer because of their work and um uh, uh, a number of people reaching out having getting surgery done they need help walking the dog or getting the dog out of the apartment to do his business and um you know and I, it's it's so nice to I, I because I remember where I was on those just vacation decisions and that was a big uh, you know that was a big problem to work through as you described you know calling five of your friends and you know doing the brainstorm who could possibly do this for me you know but to have the comfort of just saying well it's as easy as not I don't even have to call Mary I don't have to text Mary I can just you know hop on time to pet and make a request and it's just handled in the background I get that confirmation email it's a beautiful thing um the the sitter shows up um and my my pet is is cared for and loved. I get photos. I get a report. I know what happened. Uh, the house is secured. I trust them. Everything's good. And that's wow. That's I would love to have had that back then on those vacation trips. <laughs> and and a lot of people again they don't. A lot of clients don't know that that's a mental burden that they can be relieved of. Right. Whenever I say mm-hmm. things like especially when we go through our, our new client meeting and onboarding. And I say, um, well, now that we've gone through this and you're set up in our system, you can book 24 seven and we'll always show up the look on their face when they kind of go, Oh, Oh, wow. Like I don't have to, I can just, I, you know, I've said like we've taken requests when people have been sitting on planes because they forgot to book us. Right. Or like we've, you can pack in the morning, you can send <laughs> us a request and we'll show up. Like, it's like, we, we're here for you. I will never say that, but oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I say that because people kind of want to know, and I'm like, well, we t- we do our best to accommodate last minutes so much so that we had a lady who thought yeah. her husband had booked the visits, but while they were sitting on the airplane, she, he 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 realized he didn't. So I got a panicked fa- phone call from the, from the wife, <laughs> and I said, "Hey, send it through. We'll get it processed. Yeah. Don't worry." <laughs> it, it's 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 so easy when you already have all the pet information you already have all the household information that you need um you know where the leashes and the dog food is kept you um you have access to the home that's all handled and and um you know and the, and the payment um process is all handled as well so there's it's easy for us as um business owners and it's and it's lovely for the client you know, because they have that relationship with your company and um and it's it's as easy as making that phone call from the plane. Yeah. That's so. well we sold ourselves clearly. <laughs> okay, okay. Sounds good. Let's book the trip. Uh yeah, okay, all right. Boy, I I want to book with you. <laughs> right. I know. It's like my like, god, oh, this so the service is so <laughs> well yeah. Mary, I really want to thank you for for your time today and for walking us through that peace of mind and what that means and some tangible reasons and 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 purpose that we can put behind our work to get connected with our clients and 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 walking through those those pain points and and making sure that clients understand that right and and then building out your team and and working in your local market. I, I'm so thankful for your time today, Mary. Um, but I know there's a whole lot going on and you're you've you're very you've got a lot in, from day to day. How can people best get connected with you and follow along with everything that you've got going on? Um well I do have a website, uh, easy to find, NorthDallasPetCare.com. That's the best place to start. Um you can find me on Facebook by the same name. I'm on Instagram. Um, yeah, all okay. those things. You you can you can call or text or email. Quite available. Yeah, this is an absolute pleasure. Um, I'm so thankful for the time, and uh, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful for all that you and Megan do in having this podcast. I can't tell you how often the the subject matter of your podcast has just really hit the spot for me. And, uh, and it's just, it's just nice having that sanity check out there (laughs) because it is such a solitary business or can be. And it's nice to know that, Oh, here's what other people are doing. Here's what other people are experiencing. And thank you for being that voice of reason out there in the woods. Appreciate it. A question that we often ask ourselves in our own business is the question of to what end? 
to what end are we doing this? Are we, are we reaching out in this endeavor? Are we taking on this client? Are we offering this new service? Are we going down this path of marketing and advertising? I think one aspect of that that I really appreciate that Mary pointed out was how are we working to strengthen the pet human bond with our clients? How does our services, how do our services better equip the pet owner to enhance their relationship with their pet? And likewise, every interaction that we have with the pet influences how that pet is going to interact and perceive their human owner. Everything that we do and teach and pour into the life of the pet owner will interact and change how they perceive and love on their furry family member. It's a lot that we do. It's a big thing that we take on, and it is incredibly wonderful. We want to thank today's sponsors, Timed Pet and the Peaceful Pet Music, Calm Music for Pets YouTube channel for making today's show possible. And we really want to thank you for listening. We genuinely are so happy and thankful that you're here, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your week. We'll be back again soon. Bye.